Let's see how the Bellman-Ford algorithm finds the shortest path in a graph. It's similar to Dijkstra's algorithm, but with one key difference. Bellman-Ford can handle graphs with negative edge weights, and it can also detect negative weight cycles. First, we initialize a table to store information about the cost and the previous nodes. Initially, we set the cost to reach the source node to zero, while the cost of all other nodes is set to infinity. The previous field of all nodes is set to none. Next, we update the costs, also called relaxation. For each edge from node U to node V with weight W, we check if the cost to reach node U plus weight W is less than the current cost to reach node V. If it is, we update the cost of node V to this smaller value, and we also set the previous node of node V to node U, indicating that node U is the previous node in the shortest path. We repeat this for all edges, and we do this V minus one times, where V is the number of nodes. Next, once we've finished the relaxation process, we perform it one more time. If the costs are still being updated, it means the graph contains negative weight cycles. In this case, the algorithm fails. The reason for this failure will be discussed later in the video. And lastly, if there is no negative weight cycle, we are left with the shortest path from the source to all other nodes. Now, coming to our example, let's first initialize the table. We'll consider node A as our source node. So we set the cost of node A to zero as it's already there, and then set the cost to all the other nodes to infinity. The previous node for all nodes is set to none. Now, since the total number of nodes is seven, we need to check this algorithm for at most six times, which is V minus one, where V is the number of nodes. Next, we have to perform the relaxation of the edges. For each edge, the order in which we check them does not matter. The algorithm will give the same result. Let's start with the first edge in our order, the edge AF. The cost of node A is zero, and the weight of the edge is three, giving a total of three. This is less than the current cost of node F, which is infinity. So we update the cost of node F to 3 and set node A as the previous node for node F. Next, for the edge AB, the cost of node A is 0 and the edge weight is 2. Combining both, we get a total of 2, which is less than the current cost of node B. So we update the cost of node B to 2 and set node A as the previous node for node B. Similarly, the cost to reach node D is 5, which is less than the current cost, so we update the cost of node D to five and set node A as the previous node for node D. Next for the edge BE, the cost of node B is two and the weight of the edge is one, giving a total of three. This is less than the current cost of node E, so we update the cost of node E to three and set node B as the previous node for node E. Next for the edge DE, the cost of node D is five and the weight of the edge is one, giving a total of six. This is not less than the current cost of node E, so there's no need to update the cost. Next, for the edge EC, the cost of node E is three and the weight of the edge is negative three, giving a total of zero. This is less than the current cost of node C, so we update the cost of node C to zero and set node E as the previous node for node C. Next, for the edge EG, the cost of node E is three and the weight of the edge is three, giving a total of six. This is less than the current cost of node G, so we update the cost of node G to six and set node E as the previous node for node G. Next, for the edge CB, the cost of node C is zero and the weight of the edge is seven, giving a total of seven. This is not less than the current cost of node B, so we will not update it. Next, for the edge CG, the cost of node C is zero and the weight of the edge is four, giving a total of four. This is less than the current cost of node G, so we update the cost of node G to four and set node C as the previous node for node G. Next, for the edge GD, the cost of node G is four and the weight of the edge is minus one, giving a total of three. This is less than the current cost OD, so we update the cost of node D to three and set node G as the previous node for node D. Next, for the edge FB, the cost of node F is three and the weight of the edge is negative four, giving a total of negative one. This is less than the current cost of node B, 
so we update the cost of node B to negative 1 and set node F as the previous node for node B. Now, the first iteration is over, so we proceed to the next iteration. This time, I will stop the voiceover until the next iteration as the steps are exactly the same as before. Observe the relaxation carefully. Now, the second iteration is over, so we proceed to the third iteration. Observe this one carefully, as there is an important concept to cover after this iteration.
In this iteration, no further updates occur. This means there won't be any more relaxations in the later iterations, and no updates during the negative weight cycle detection either. So there's no need to check further. We can stop here and return the results. Now let's use this result to find the shortest path from node A to node G. First, we check the previous node of node G, which is node C. So we add node C to the path and then check its previous node, which is node E. We add node E to the path and look at its previous node, which is node B. Next, we add node B to the path and check its previous node, which is node F. We add node F to the path and then check its previous node, which is node A, the source node. Since we've reached the source, we stop here. Now, we have the shortest path from node A to node G. Now, let's understand the key issue with negative weight cycles. So here, we have a graph with nodes A, B, and C, and it contains a negative weight cycle, meaning the sum of the weights of the edges in this cycle is negative. Let's perform the same algorithm on this graph using node A as the source node. We will initialize the cost of node A to zero and set the cost of all other nodes to infinity. Additionally, the previous node for all nodes will be set to none. Now, since there are a total of three nodes, we need to perform the relaxation process two times and then check for negative weight cycles. First is the edge AB. The cost of node A is zero and the edge weight is one, giving a total of one. This is less than the current cost of node B, so we update the cost of node B to one and set node A as its previous node. Next is the edge BC. The cost of node B is one and the edge weight is negative four, giving a total of negative three. This is less than the current cost of node C. So we update the cost of node C to negative three and set node B as its previous node. Next is the edge CA. The cost of node C is negative three and the edge weight is two, giving a total of negative one. This is less than the current cost of node A, so we update the cost of node A to negative 1 and set node C as its previous node. Now, the first iteration is over, and we will perform the second iteration in a similar manner. The main reason the algorithm fails in the presence of negative weight cycles is that it keeps finding smaller and smaller paths indefinitely. It will continue converging to lower and lower costs forever without ever stabilizing. The second iteration is now complete. Next, we perform one more iteration to confirm whether there is a negative weight cycle. If such a cycle exists, the algorithm will continue updating the costs. Now, here the current cost of node A is negative 2 and the edge weight is 1, giving a total of negative 1. This is less than the current cost of node B, indicating that updates are still occurring, which shouldn't happen if there were no negative weight cycle. This confirms the presence of a negative weight cycle, causing the algorithm to fail at this point. Now the algorithm goes through all the edges V minus one times to perform relaxation and one more time to check for negative weight cycles. So the total time complexity is O of V times E. The algorithm uses space to keep track of the costs and previous node information, which depends on the number of nodes. It also needs space to store the graph, which is proportional to the number of nodes and edges. So the total space complexity is O of V plus E. Now, let's take a look at the Python code implementation of this algorithm. If you're not interested, feel free to skip this part. First, we define a function that takes the graph and the source node as input. Then, we initialize a table where the cost of all nodes is set to infinity, and the previous node for each is set to none. Next, we mark the cost of the source node as zero. Next, we initialize a variable called relaxation and set it to false initially. This variable will help us track whether we need to continue the relaxation process or not. Then we run a loop for one less than the number of nodes in the graph to perform the edge relaxation process. Next, we go through each edge pair in the graph and perform the relaxation process as discussed earlier. If a relaxation occurs, we also set the relaxation variable to true. And then 
If no relaxation occurred in the previous iteration, we simply break the loop here. And if relaxation occurred, we check for the negative wait cycle. If there is one, we simply indicate that the algorithm has failed and return from there. And if there is no negative wait cycle, we simply return the table with the final costs and previous nodes. For the full implementation of the algorithm, check out the GitHub link below.